We all use it. But how much do you really know about the origins of the Internet? Such as, who invented the Internet? <laughs> all of the people listed, including Al Gore, made significant contributions. But no one person invented the Internet. It was the result of contributions from hundreds of different people over an extended period. Most of them you haven't heard of. For example, who holds the key patents for the technology underlying Wi-Fi and your smartphone? The answer is Hedy Lamarr, Hollywood's reigning sex goddess before Marilyn Monroe. Her 1941 patent for preventing jamming of allied torpedoes was classified top secret. This evening I'm going to follow one of many evolutionary branches, the one that happened to win out and along the way point out some things that maybe you didn't know and perhaps even debunk some things that you thought you did know. In the late 1980s, excuse me, 60s, the government began funding the development of a new computer network that would be robust and have the ability to withstand the, the loss of large portions of itself. Think the Terminator. By the end of the decade, researchers had created a prototype network, the ARPANET. The ARPANET grew, and the rules of the road describing how information was exchanged matured and became the TCPIP protocols. The language of the ARPANET was TCPIP. That's the language that networks used to talk to each other, or at least some networks. Unfortunately, there were two problems. The nodes were expensive, like 100K each. And it didn't work very well when there were more than a few users. And there was competition from networks dedicated to specific user communities. Users wanted more of the same-o, same-o. Small, dedicated, unconnected, relatively low-performance networks, each running its own vendor proprietary language. For a more, more complete technical description, I would refer you to Genesis chapter 11 versus <laughs> verses 1 through 9, which covers the Tower of Babel. <laughs> there was no user demand for a single high-performance network that met the needs of multiple communities. The Internet was a field of dreams. Build it, and they will come. So how did we get from the ARPANET with a few thousand users in 1981 to more than 10 million users in 1994? How did we get on the cover of Newsweek? Or stated differently, why did TCPIP become the international networking standard? Well, in 1985, the National Science Foundation proposed linking the national supercomputing centers with telephone lines and mandated that TCPIP would be the networking standard. Users were furious. They all wanted their networking language to be the national standard. The turning point in overcoming user resistance came at a uh, National Science Foundation at Science Advisory Committee when Ken Wilson, a mild-mannered but brilliant physics Nobel laureate, took off his shoe and began pounding on the table chanting, TCPIP, <laughs> and cowed everybody in the room into submission. <laughs> what the committee didn't know was that Ken Wilson didn't know TCPIP from ABC. He'd gone to the meeting with instructions from his wife, a TCPIP guru who used to work for me, to make sure that TCPIP was endorsed as the national standard. In 1985, five then young, sorry about the old fart pictures, techies submitted a proposal to the NSF. Give us some seed money and we will con we will convince <laughs> universities in our region to create regional networks connected their campuses to the supercomputing backbone. The new network was called NSFNet. We were quickly joined by California, Texas, and Michigan, and the network was an operational reality. That would have been in about 1986. Unfortunately, it didn't work very well, particularly under load. Our solution was to ask people to trust us. 
and send more money. <laughs> Would you buy a used car from people like that? <laughs> Our university's dead, and the NS... <laughs> And the NSF funded a new backbone. The winner of the competition was a partnership of the state of Michigan, a group of Michigan universities, IBM and MCI. I was one of the losers with a group of Midwestern universities, the University of Nebraska, and AT&T. Well, I'd like to come back to an earlier question. True or false, did Al Gore say he invented the internet? The answer is false. In discussing his legislative achievements, he expressed pride in taking the initiative in creating the internet. So what did he do? Al Gore was both the driving force behind the legislation that funded our efforts and a cheerleader, hosting meetings in the Capitol building for those of us who were working in the trenches. He was inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame in 2012. The new NSF net backbone worked and worked very well. By 1992, it looked like this. The national backbone was running at an astounding 45 megabits per second. That's slightly slower than the connection you have in your home today. For-profit spin-offs were being created to handle commercial customers who were becoming increasingly important. The takeaways are that the internet evolved over 30 years as a result of the collaboration between government, higher education, and the private sector. It didn't have to happen the way it did. It probably couldn't happen today, but individuals do make a difference. In 1995, the backbone had been transitioned to the private sector, and most of the mid-level networks were sold to private sector companies. The rest is history. Thank you.